Now, it was only in the late 1700s that ventriloquism became associated with puppetry. That's when a man named Jacques saint Gillet, a natural-born ventriloquist but a grocer by trade, he knew nothing about the dark, demonic side of ventriloquism. He was just a performer. By taking a little toy nutcracker like this one and coordinating the movement of the nutcracker mouth and using his artistry as a ventriloquist, he was able to create the illusion that the nutcracker had come to life. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Good? Yes. You, sir, are a nutcracker? I, sir, am a soldier. A soldier? Oui. 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 French? Yes, sir, I am a French soldier. A French soldier? Oui. How do I know that you're a French soldier? I surrender. Now, this may seem quite crude by today's standards, but I gotta tell you, the contribution that St. Gelly made to the art of ventriloquism cannot be overstated. Because you see, in this one simple act, he took ventriloquism out of a seance and he put it on a stage for everyone to see. It was the first time that ventriloquism had ever been used as a performance rather than some spiritual experience. But more importantly than that, he's the one that created the relationship between a man and a puppet, which is the way we perform ventriloquism today. As a matter of fact, Tchaikovsky based his ballet, The Nutcracker, on the very legend of St. Gilly's talking enchanted nutcracker.